I'm Dan Edmonds and this is a Toyota Tundra TRD Pro, the all new redesign. If you remember, my very first suspension walk around video was the last generation Toyota TRD Pro Tundra. So this is gonna be really interesting to contrast the two, especially since suspension is one of the major differences between the last truck and this truck. And of course, that's what I'm here for. Well, this is the new front suspension, and there's a couple differences that stand out even from this angle. For one, there are six lug nuts instead of five, and the knuckle here, the upright, is now made of aluminum instead of steel. Let's get in a little bit closer and see what else we can find. This overall view shows that the TRD branding is in full effect. I mean, obviously the skid plate, the red springs, the stabilizer bar is now red, and even the drive shafts here, I don't know if you can see this, but the axle shafts are red too. I get it. The front coilovers on the TRD Pro consist of red TRD springs over 2.5 inch Fox internal bypass aluminum bodied shock absorbers. The internal bypass feature allows damping to be soft in the middle of the travel for daily driving and firm up considerably but progressively all the way at full compression and full rebound. So here's the entire lower control arm from its inner pivot to the ball joint. And so this is where I like to look at the motion ratio. So here is where the stabilizer bar attaches. And that looks to be maybe 75 or 80 percent of the way out. Let's call it 80 percent. So 0.8 is the efficiency ratio of this stabilizer bar attachment. That means for every inch of wheel movement you'll get eight tenths of an inch or so of movement here to twist the bar. This stabilizer bar end link mount is now single shear and really beefy. It used to be uh, a pocket that this would slide into but now it's massive and it's a single shear mount. These uh, steering stops, which interface with this feature on the lower control arm, are revised, but they still operate in the same way. And there's another one on the back for turning in the opposite direction. I really like this split knuckle, which has a separate bolt-on piece where the lower ball joint is. Theoretically, you could alter the relationship between the knuckle and the lower ball joint by swapping in a different part here. And I think Toyota may have done that to compensate for the 1.1 inch front lift on the TRD Pro. Further in, we see where the coilover shock attaches here. It's a little above the plane, but we still kind of look at this distance here, and that looks more like 60%, uh, maybe a little less. Anyway, 0.6 or thereabouts seems to be the motion ratio of the coil over shock. It's a little less because of its inclination, uh, but it's a small angle, so it probably doesn't amount to a lot. But yeah, the motion ratio here is a little bit less than this, and so when you're figuring out your spring rates and your damping, uh, you have to keep that in mind. Because really what happens out at the wheel is what matters, and these ratios really have to be taken into account when you're really thinking about what's happening at the tire contact patch. Another thing of note that isn't particularly special, but I like stuff like this, is how the stabilizer bar pushing mount is nestled into this corner between the subframe at the very front that holds the skid plate and the frame rail. Nice to see stuff that's protected like that. Here's that red uh, axle shaft we didn't see before. Pretty obvious to see here from the rear side. We can also see the bump stop. This contacts this part of the uh, lower control arm. Now there isn't one on the other side like there was last year. There would have been two of these last year. This time there's just the one. But I gotta think that up inside the coilover there is probably a bump stop up there that we can't see because of the dust boot. Like the last generation, the new Tundra's front brakes, TRD or otherwise, are four piston fixed calipers and you can see here's one, two, three, four pistons 
and it's an open window design as I like to call it where this is completely open you can just pull these two pins and pop the pads right out when you want to change them you wouldn't see that necessarily on a track car or anything with six pistons a track focused vehicle there'd probably be something across the middle here that would close this off and require the whole caliper to come off to change pads but in a vehicle like this which is more for routine use this is just pure convenience when it comes time to change brake pads well that's it for the front suspension of the new TRD Pro I'm gonna put the tire back on and move to the back and I think you'll agree that's where the real changes appear so here we have it the rear of the new Tundra from SR5 all the way up to TRD Pro has coil springs you can just see it here we'll get a better close-up in a moment uh, instead of leaf springs this is the second truck in modern times to do this behind the Ram 1500 which has had them for some time yes the Raptor has coil spring rear suspension but it's just the Raptor the uh, regular F-150s still have leaf springs and the Lightning has something else entirely so this is significant because all Tundras have it the coil spring here sits on top of the axle right here and it goes up to just underneath here behind the frame rail now this is important because there are slots in here that are open but those are for optional air springs that some Tundras have in the rear for load leveling this one doesn't have it it just has a straight coil but once you have coil springs you can substitute air springs so these are the TRD Pro Fox internal bypass shocks you can see they have a remote reservoir it's piggyback style there's no hose this little bridge here has a passage for the oil to pass through the thing that's uh, surprising to me is that these aren't inverted uh, in other words the the bodies at the the bottom and the shaft underneath this plastic boot is at the top you know, it's pretty much just the size of a finger uh, so there's not much weight at the top and a lot more weight at the bottom and uh, this is all the unsprung mass down here I like to see them inverted it's the uh, the heavy stuff up near the frame uh, it's uh, you know less unsprung mass that way but you know also I think uh, the consideration that Toyota probably went with as well if you do that then the shaft here is down near the rocks and it's susceptible to damage uh, up here it's pretty uh, pretty unlikely to get struck and, and bent and there could have been a packaging reason too uh, you know because of the way this bracket is you, you wouldn't really have a piggyback off of here very elegantly and the way their stabilizer bars run so you know might have been a packaging reason but anyway these are still really good shocks whether they're inverted or not so here's one of the trailing links there's one of these lower links per side there's an upper link too but it's hidden behind the frame rail uh, not like a ram though in a ram you see both of them right here in the raptor you see both of them right here but this has a setup that's more like the forerunner where one link is down low and the other one's up high and behind the frame rail there's two of those per side and then of course a lateral pan hard rod to locate the axle left to right which isn't something that's necessary on leaf spring trucks although that's part of the problem with leaf springs the leafs are trying to do too much of course when you have a coil sprung rear axle you need a stabilizer bar which isn't necessary on a leaf spring truck although some do have them and here it is and you can see it mounts to the the frame with this drop link and the bushing is mounted to the axle housing right here here this is the other link we were looking for so there's the long lower link and then there's this shorter upper link which attaches to the axle with this bracket and to the frame cross member here it's got a little mass damper here but the key point is this one is quite a bit shorter than the main lower one here and what that does is it makes the axle the nose of the differential and the universal joint specifically move a little bit as the suspension compresses to keep the universal joint uh, equal to the one up at the front by the uh, transmission so that there's no vibration so here is the 
pan hard bar or track rod and it is the fifth link and it's pretty easy to visualize what it does it prevents the axle from moving left and right because the links don't have that capability and so this end is mounted to this bracket which is part of the frame and then that end down there is mounted to a bracket that's welded to the axle and so that's the axle end this is the frame end now you want that bar to be as long as you can so as the axle moves up and down this is going to move like that and if it's short it'll you know, have a, a real short radius and it'll pull the axle left and right a little bit the longer it is the less it does that you know you want it as long as you can but there's always limitations and if you look over there the limitations seem to be the uh, shock mount and the lower link mount but it's still pretty long but yeah not as long as some i've seen here's the spring again and we can see actually that it has a urethane bump stop in the middle of it this looks like one that takes the edge off because it's urethane and then the rubber one here is more of a bump stop of last resort uh, that you know doesn't compress as much or as gracefully as this urethane one will rear brakes on the trd uh, pro are the same as the other tundras they are single piston sliding calipers the piston is here and this is the fixed side and there is a uh, pin here so this can move so that when the piston applies force the caliper can apply equal grip to both sides of the rotor um, it is ventilated here uh, and this working radius is pretty big it's never going to be as impressive to look at a rear brake as it will be to look at a front brake because most of the work happens on the front axle due to weight transfer well, that's it for this close-up look at the suspension of the new Toyota Tundra, which has finally made the switch from leaf springs to coil springs. And I got to say, it pays dividends when you drive this truck around unloaded. It, the difference is amazing. Anyhow, but the big question is, how will this flex on my RTI ramp? Well, that's the next thing I'm going to do. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to put this tire on and probably wait till I have better light in the morning and uh, we'll see how this new suspension flexes. The first thing I'm going to do is line it up with the ramp and get out and take a look at the clearance make sure we have enough. I'm sure we do but it's just part of the process. Well no problem here plenty of clearance between the tire and the ramp and the body work here. But I will say the uh, amount of clearance here isn't quite as generous as I expected. You know, a Raptor or a TRX has quite a bit more. Now the approach angle that's published is measured in the middle there, and that would still clear this ramp, but certainly it's not as much clearance as we see right here. Uh, another thing to point out are these tires. They are, well, they've been worked on. This truck only has 7,000 miles on it, but obviously somebody else beat on it before I got it. The tread is really thin and that may affect the score only because fresh tires with lots of lugs that are squishy there's a little bit more give in a test like this and a little bit better score might only be a few points but certainly it's not optimum to get the best number also these tires they're not lt tires they're not light truck tires like you see on everybody else's off-road package jeeps broncos all of that toyota for some reason, just refuses to use decent off-road tires, even on their TRD off-road packages. It's the Forerunner, the Tacoma, the Tundra. It's just their policy. And so that's why a lot of people, when they buy these trucks, one of the first things they do is bolt on some beefier off-road tires. One thing you may notice when I drive up here is you won't hear a V8 engine anymore. This is a twin turbo V6. It's actually also a hybrid, which is interesting. It won't motor up the ramp without the engine firing up because the demand is too high for that. But, you know, pulling up to the curb out front, it might roll up at low speeds on electricity. Yeah.
best turn it off, right? Well, came off the ground. I went too far, which is interesting because the uh, four-wheel drive system was able to go even though the wheel was off the ground, but I don't know if I backed up enough or too much. We'll see. I can lift it off the ground and it is touching before I lift, so I might be right there. I'm going to be a little bit more uh, cautious about making that call, so just a minute while I get out my trusty piece of newsprint. It's not newsprint, but it's a brochure. <laughs> Can't pull it out. If I put a little pressure on the top of the tire, I, I can, so... I'm going to call that a really fortunate first try. What we're really after here is the distance up the ramp that the truck climbed. But I can't really measure that directly because it doesn't come to a point down there. So uh, I measure the height instead and use trigonometry. This is a 20 degree ramp, so if I divide this height by the sine of 20 degrees, I get the hypotenuse length, which is the number I'm after. So 145.7 is the wheelbase, and we just measured its climb at 20 and 5 sixteenths, which is 20.31 inches. Now, if we divide that by the sine of 20, we get the climb distance, which is 59.389, so 59.4. And now we divide that by 145.7, and we get that. We multiply by 1,000 because that's what you do with RTI scores. And we get a number, 407.6, which is 408. Well, we've seen the details of the Tundra's new suspension, and they're pretty interesting. We've also seen that they're not nearly as radical a departure from the regular Tundra as the TRX and Raptor are from the, the trucks that they're based on. And that's why we're seeing this. The TRD Pro's number is good for a normal full-size truck, but for an off-road package, this proves that it's not necessarily the rock crawler that these could be because its suspension flexibility just isn't there. It'd be nice to see what the Tundra could be if Toyota decided to really go up against the TRX and the Raptor as a direct competitor. But at this point, they're not doing that, and that's why we're seeing this number here. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and also let me know what you want to see next time.